Hi, this is Emmanuel from Sophos Support and today I'll show you how to set up Sophos Zero Trust Network Access in your environment. Sophos CTNA is the perfect complement to Sophos Firewall, Endpoint, XDR and MDR. It's an easy to deploy cloud-based solution that lets you easily control access to resources on your network. Unlike VPNs that provide data security through encryption, CTNA focuses on user authentication and authorization to maintain security. Users and endpoints can only access the resources permitted by their role and no more, addressing a potential vulnerability inherent to VPN remote access. Regardless of how you configure the CTNA gateway, once set up, it provides a seamless experience for end users. Software CTNA can be deployed in two modes based on your needs. I'll show you how to deploy this in the Sophos Cloud using Sophos Firewall and in on-premises scenarios using Microsoft Hyper-V. Use the video chapters to watch the section relevant to your deployment type. Additionally, you can learn more about the packet flow for each mode to help you decide which one best suits your needs. Refer to the linked documentation. Next, I'll configure policies to set permissions and access. Then, I'll add apps and resources and demonstrate how to access them. The steps for both agentless and agent-based modes are shown. For agent-based resources, I'll also cover the steps for installing the CTNA agent. Lastly, I'll give a quick overview of the reporting data available in Sophos Central. Before you begin, you must have a Sophos firewall on version 19.5 MR3 or later, and the firewall must be managed by Sophos Central. Next, to use the Sophos CTNA agent, you must have Windows 10.1803 or later, or Mac OS Big Sur or later. Cloud Gateway deployments are supported in ESXi, Hyper-V, and directly in Sophos Firewall. Meanwhile, on-premises CTNA Gateway deployments are only supported in VMware ESXi and Microsoft Hyper-V. Amazon Web Services is no longer supported. Next, you must have a directory service and identity provider, such as Microsoft Entra ID, and your users should be synced in Sophos Central. Refer to the linked resources for further information. You also need access to your public DNS provider. For on-premises setup, ensure that you have the appropriate role installed for your respective hypervisor. Lastly, you need a wildcard certificate. You can use one issued by a trusted certificate authority or seamlessly generate your own Let's Encrypt certificate right in CTNA for easy management. Once again, refer to the relevant documentation for further information. Let's get started. Sophos Cloud Gateway Setup is the easiest and fastest to deploy, especially when using Firewall as the platform. Skip ahead to the next section if you wish to perform an on-premises deployment. To set up the gateway, go to My Products, CTNA, Gateways. Or if you're already on the CTNA dashboard, go to Gateways. Click Add Gateway. Choose Sophos Cloud as the mode. Enter a name and location. The description is optional. Under Domain and Certificate, indicate which wildcard certificate you're using. Here, I'll use the automatic option. This generates a Let's Encrypt certificate, which never expires and is automatically renewed. If you want to use your own certificate, choose the other option. However, you'll need to upload a new one each time it's renewed. Next, select an available domain to use with the gateway and enter the host name. Ensure that this FQDN can resolve to a public IP. Now, choose the platform type and identity provider. Here, I'll choose Sophos Firewall and Azure IDP, respectively. Then, choose an available firewall to use. The only options in the list are firewalls managed by Sophos Central and running SFOS v19.5 MR3 or later. You can also choose a firewall from an active HA pair to ensure failover of traffic and services. Lastly, choose the region. You should select the one nearest to your data center to reduce latency. In CTNA 2.1 and later, a secondary point of presence is set up by default nearest to your primary point of presence. You can disable this in the settings page if needed. Click Save. Once your gateway has been added, you'll see the alias domain is generated. Copy this information as you'll need to add this as a record in your DNS server. Switch to your DNS provider and add a new alias record. The steps for your specific DNS provider may differ, so refer to your provider's documentation for the correct format to enter the record. Once saved, you're now ready to configure your policies and add resources. Now, I'll show you how to set up an on-premises gateway with Microsoft Hyper-V. Start by downloading and deploying the gateway VM image from Sophos Central. Go to My Products, CTNA, Gateways. 
click Download Gateway VM. Scroll down to the CTNA section and choose the Gateway image for Hyper-V. Extract the image, then launch the Hyper-V Manager. In Actions, click New Virtual Machine. This launches the wizard. Click Next to start. Keep the VM a name. Select the generation. Generation 1 supports both 32-bit and 64-bit operating systems. Assign at least 4096 megabytes of startup memory. Now select the network adapter. In my case, there's no option yet, which means I need to add one. I configure this to use a virtual switch shortly. Lastly, choose use an existing virtual hard disk. Find and select the extracted file. Click Finish. The new virtual machine now appears in the manager list. Open the settings. Click Processor. Then set the number of virtual processors to 2. Click Apply, then OK. Now create a virtual switch. Go to Virtual Switch Manager. I'll add one according to my network requirements, but choose your specific settings as needed. Return to Settings and set the network adapter to use the new virtual switch. Now, return to Sophos Central and create a new gateway. From the central dashboard, go to My Products, CTNA, Gateways. Click Add Gateway. For the mode, choose On-Premises. Enter a name. Under Domain and Certificate, indicate which wildcard certificate you're using. In my case, I'll use the automatic option, which generates a Let's Encrypt certificate. This never expires and is automatically renewed. If you have your own to use, choose the other option. However, you'll need to upload a new certificate each time it's renewed. Next, select an available domain to use with the gateway and enter the host name. Make sure this is an FQDN that can resolve to a public IP. For platform type, choose Hyper-V. Then set the identity provider. In this case, I'll choose Azure IDP. Now choose the deployment mode. I'll use one arm in this case. Refer to the link documentation for more information about the other modes. Then enter the interface settings. In my case, I'm using a static IP, but if you're using DHCP, configure your settings accordingly. I'll specify all IP addresses, subnets, gateways, and DNS servers. Click Save and Generate File. This will create the gateway image for deployment in Hyper-V. Once ready, the new gateway is added to the list and the status is waiting for deployment. Download the image. Note that this is unique for each gateway and can't be reused. Return to the Hyper-V manager to deploy the image. Open the gateway settings. In the hardware section, select the DVD drive. On the controller, ensure IDE controller 1 is selected. Then choose image file and select the gateway image. Click Apply, then OK. Click Start to deploy the gateway. The gateway will boot using the image and contact Surfall Central to register. Now, go back to Surfall Central. Click on the gateway to view its details. Once communication with Surfall Central has been established, the Approve button will become selectable. Click Approve to register the gateway. The process can take up to 10 minutes. Once complete, the status changes to active. With your gateway set up, you're ready to create policies in Surfall Central to set user and condition access. You can then add resources that are launched through the CTNA gateway. I'll start with the steps for agentless access. For agent-based resources, skip ahead to the next section. Go to Policies, click Add Policy, and choose the policy type. Agent requires the CTNA agent and allows you to set conditions for access based on device health through synchronized security. On the other hand, Agentless doesn't require the agent, but you can only access web apps. Furthermore, you cannot set conditions based on device health. Choose Agentless and click Continue. Enter a name. Click Save. The new policy now appears in the list. Now add a new resource. Go to Resources and Access. Click Add Resource. Enter the resource name. The description is optional. Make sure Show Resource in User Portal is selected. Next, select the new gateway. Agentless is selected by default and the policy is already applied. Set the resource type. Here, I'll add a Firewall Web Admin Portal. Then, add the external FQDN. As a reminder, this must be a public IP. 
since this is a web admin portal, I don't need to enter the internal FQDN or port settings, but other resource types will require this, as we'll see later. Next, assign the user groups that need access to the resource. Select from the available groups on the left or search for a group. Click the arrow to add them to the assigned user groups. Note, if you change the name of an assigned Microsoft and try the user group later, the list isn't updated automatically, so you need to assign the group again, otherwise users will lose access to the app. Click Save. For Sophos Cloud Gateways using agentless access, the resource alias domain is now shown. Make sure to add this domain as a record on your public DNS server. To access agentless resources, users must navigate to the CTNA user portal. The web address for the portal is the FQDN entered when you added the gateway earlier. Users must sign in the first time they enter. The CTNA portal displays all apps they have access to according to the policy. Note, the portal currently doesn't show apps that are accessed via the CTNA agent. If no apps are accessed for 7 days, users must sign in again the next time they access the portal. Now, I'll show you how to add agent-based resources. Start by creating a new policy. Go to Policies and add a new policy. This time, choose Agent. As a reminder, with this mode, you can set conditions for access based on device health, provided the endpoint agent is installed. In addition, this mode supports all TCP and UDP applications, so non-browser-based resources can be securely accessed as well. Enter a name. In the Access Rules tab, ensure use conditions to manage access is selected. Adjust the conditions for access if you wish. I leave this as the default. When you're satisfied, click Save. Next, add a new resource. This time, I'll create a Remote Desktop Protocol, or RDP. Select a new gateway. The access method is agent, and the correct policy is already set since I only have one. The resource type is RDP. Note, the external FQDN for agent-based resources must not be public. This time, I also need to include the internal FQDN or IP address. If you leave this blank, the external FQDN is added automatically. Then, enter the port settings. Lastly, assign the relevant groups. Then, save the resource. To access agent-based resources, the Sophos CTNA agent must be installed on the user device. The steps depend on whether the Sophos endpoint agent is already installed. If it is, you simply need to add the CTNA agent as a component. Go to My Products, Endpoint, Computers. Select all devices that you want to install the agent and click Manage Endpoint Software. Under CTNA, choose Install, then Save. Now, a tick appears in the CTNA column for all devices with the agent installed. For new customers, we recommend you install the complete Sophos Endpoint agent. Go to My Products, Endpoint, Installers. Under Endpoint Protection, download the complete installer. Alternatively, you can download only specific components for your OS if you wish. Once downloaded, run the installer on your devices. To confirm the installation, you can check on your devices in Sophos Central to ensure there's a tick in the CTNA column. Alternatively, you can open the endpoint agent and you'll see that CTNA is configured. With the CTNA agent now installed, users can access agent-based resources directly or using a web browser. I'll try launching the RDP app I previously added. Since I haven't authenticated yet, the app won't connect. The CTNA agent launches with a prompt to sign in. After authenticating, the remote desktop app can now be used. Once again, if no apps are accessed for 7 days, users will need to sign in again the next time they try to launch an app. Lastly, I'll give a brief overview of the CTNA reporting features. Sophos Central provides several report templates to help you quickly build reports. Go to My Products, CTNA, Reports. Make sure you're in the Report Generator tab. Here, you can choose one of the available templates to get you started. Then, select the gateway to run a report on, or choose all gateways. Click Apply. Set the time frame. 
then click Generate. The details are shown. Use the column picker to add or remove columns and customize your report as needed. Here you have a few options to export the report. Additionally, you can save it as a template and schedule its delivery. And that covers the initial setup of Sophos CTNA. I hope you found this useful. Check out the documentation for this tech read in the description. Go to the Sophos community to engage with Sophos experts and have your questions answered. And visit Sophos Tech Reads to learn more helpful tips and get the most out of your products. See you in the next tech read.